is Vince. I'm going to be teaching your PALS class today, and we're going to go over some really easy things to remember to make it keep it simple when we're dealing with PALS uh, tests and when we're doing our skills testing. When we're dealing with kiddos, kiddos go into respiratory issues, guys, like aphyxia, hypoxia, pneumonia, uh, asthmatics. That's what we're dealing with kiddos. We don't deal with heart disease when it comes to children. Let's talk about aphyxia first. A fix it would be simple choking. How do we counteract that with little ones? Little ones, babies especially, we do the five back thrusts and five chest thrusts. If we have a child that's one year and above, we do the Heimlich or we do the abdominal thrust. It's a pretty simple concept. Get to their level, do the up and go, and we're good to go there. Okay? Uh, pneumonia. If we have a kid that has pneumonia, we don't want him to progress to sepsis. We're going to have grunting. We're going to have uh, greenish yellow sputum. They're going to have tachycardia. They're going to have a fever. We want to treat them aggressively with antibiotics. And, and for me as a field medic, I would give them a little bit of albuterol and make them feel better and get them cooled off a little bit because they're going to be running that crazy fever. Now, uh, we have uh, our sepsis. That's when we've gone way too far with infections. That is really, really a terrible situation. So we, we, we really like to avoid that at all costs. And last but not least is uh, your asthmatics. Asthmatic would be someone who has asthma. Check the, the signs and symptoms of patients with, with their, that are uh, asthmatic. They're gonna have difficulty breathing. They're gonna be wheezing. They're gonna bronchial spasm they're going to be in distress. So we can treat them with albuterol or our Zopinex, or we can treat them with UNF. If, if they're really bad, I wouldn't even hesitate to go ahead and get them with some epinephrine IM. So an EpiPen, and I'll show you guys how to use that shortly. So we, we treat those patients as fast as we can to make sure that we don't watch our kid go from terrible to worse. So we want to catch that right off the bat. Let's talk about diagnostic stuff, guys. Really important to get them on PET CO2, get their pulse ox going, get that waveform capnometer through what is PET CO2. Just remember that there are several names for PET CO2, pressure end tidal, end tidal, capnometer free, waveform, quantitative, all means one and the same. So we need to think about that physically. Now, putting your patient on uh, waveform capnometer free and putting your patient on your SpO2 is going to really tell us the story of what's going on with your patients. Normal pulse ox is 94 to 99, guys. That's what we're trying to shoot for. Anything below that is starting to get hypoxic. And anything you start dropping below 80, you need to start saying to yourself, boy, this is not good times. So we want to make sure that we're always covering that at all times. Waveform capnometer free with a teardrop underneath their nose is really important. I believe put everybody on waveform cap mama free. Don't mess around with it. Put them on pulse oxes. Pulse oxes are accurate as well. No worries. Now our patient unfortunately went into cardiac arrest. Here we go again. We got to breathe for the kiddos because hypoxia is usually the main state to cardiac arrest. Kids are resilient, guys. Just remember this. Kids usually don't go into a shockable rhythm like we adults. They go into PA. So work your kids. Work your children. I want you guys to work as hard as you possibly can with your kids. Don't be discouraged. Make sure you guys are on top of it. Breathe for your kids because what has led your ch children to uh, cardiac arrest is secondary respiratory issues. So you want to make sure that you guys understand that and make sure you guys are on top of that. If you're running two people, breathe it for them, 15 to 2. If you're by yourself, it's 30 to 2. Pretty simple. Keep it as simple as possible. You guys are going to be golden. Just remember that. When we have a patient that gains ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation, we're saying to yourself, wow, this is great. How do we know we're an ROSC? It's simple. If your spikes up to 35 to 45, we know we got a That is a great, great thing. Your patient maybe your little kid might be crying. That is a wonderful thing. Crying is a good thing. That's that is good news to my ears when I hear that. 
kids that are not kids that are tracking, looking around, that is a good thing. When they don't track, that's a bad thing. Uh, make sure that the they they got a good blood pressure when they get ROSC. Make sure that they're breathing on their own. If we have to tube them or whatever else, hopefully we don't have to do that. However, to that statement, we need to make sure we check. Okay, so with kids, we normally don't intubate. However, to this, however to that, we may have to intubate. So it's going to be a case by case basis. Let's make sure that we got that good blood pressure, get those BPs up, and and go from there. So for concluding this, this particular uh, quick little uh, tips to pass your PALS examination, is the first thing you need to remember, all questions that are asked are always unstable patients. Always, the AHA wants unstable patients to be your test questions. So make sure that you guys understand that. Look at and read your scenarios. You're gonna have unstable patients. Unstable patients means you guys got to make sure that you guys definitely treat and go from there. Now, we see our test questions to be uh, less invasive and more invasive, stable or unstable. Rhythms are, are remember, the same concept for adults. They're going to be fast, slow, regular, irregular. Blocks for kiddos, unlikely. Other fast rhythms and slow rhythms, likely. Reading waveforms, blood pressures, those things. Perfusing, not perfusing, blood pressure dictates treatments. Remember these things, guys. And look at your scenario. Don't get stressed out. Look at the scenario. They're going to have bad blood pressures. Blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure dictates what we do. So just remember that. Remember that when you're taking your, your, your test, when you guys are taking your written at the, at the end of your testing. One last thing that's really important. Remember this. When we have stable patients, we usually treat them with medicine. When you have unstable patients, when, especially when they're fast rhythms, we treat them with Edison. We're going to synchronize cardioverdum. Medicine for stable, Edison for unstable. Okay? Last but not least, for rhythm breathing and everything else in, that we, we see in our patients, which is really important on when you're taking your test and everything else that goes around it, is this. Joules per kilogram, very important when you guys are synchronized cardioversion. And also, you got to know what you guys' weights are. When you're defibrillating, you got to know what their weights are. And when you guys are given drugs, everything is per kilogram. We need to know that. Two little tips for this, okay, for you guys. Download the, the eBrosol Safe Dose app. That will keep you from med airing. That is a really good thing. You guys download that. You guys are going to be super. It's going to be awesome, okay? And then last but not least is... Remember, in defibrillation, we go two, four, six, eight. That's the dose to defibrillate. If you guys remember that with kiddos, you guys are going to be awesome. And then we end with 10. When we synchronize cardiovert, it's 0 0.5 to 1 joule per kilogram. And we end with 2 joules per kilogram max dose when it comes to synchronized cardioversion. Those are the best tips I can give to you guys for your written tests. If you guys follow this, you guys are going to be super. You guys are going to be able to pass your tests. Thank you.